Um, so the first control is a negative control you do with tryptophan and with control chemical and you expect growth because you, the cells have tryptophan so therefore, therefore they will grow. Questions? Okay. The second control is also a negative, is also a negative control because there's, it's with tryptophan and without a control chemical. So it has the tryptophan, it will grow. So when she's talking about the experiments, you basically want to think of the growth media in two parts. You want to think about what's on the bottom, what's on the top, and then eventually what's growing in the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the nutrient in the bottom, what's the nutrient in the top, and then what kinds of cells are growing in the top? Okay, questions? Okay, then the third control is also a negative control. It does not have tryptophan and it does not have a control chemical, so it's a little bit of a different negative control because you're not expecting any growth. The cells don't have tryptophan and it doesn't have a chemical to mutate it in order to grow without the tryptophan, so there will be no growth. So let's talk about what's in the bottom. In the bottom of? The bottom auger is what? The minimal auger plates, which will not have tryptophan in them. They'll just have other nutrients needed to grow. What's in the top? In the top, for the third control, mm -hmm. um, there's no tryptophan and there's no control chemical causing the mutation. So, and then the bacteria or the cells have are unmutated, right? Correct. They're unmutated without the control chemical, and they don't have tryptophan to grow. Okay. So, minimal media on the bottom, minus tryptophan in the top, unmutated cells. Should these cells grow or not? No. no. Okay. So this is like you with a celery. Okay, then the fourth is the positive control where the mutation occurs. So there's no tryptophan, so if the cells weren't mutated, they wouldn't grow. Let's break it down again. Bottom is what? Bottom is minimal. minimal. minimal auger. Yeah. Top is? Am I answering this? Yes. Okay, without tryptophan and without control chemical, so without food to grow and without a mutation. Or with a mutation, sorry. With a mutation. So these are mutated cells without tryptophan in the top auger, and with minimal growth media on the bottom. Some of them yeah. should grow. Is formaldehyde, what is formaldehyde now? It's like using the and stuff. Mutagen? Yeah, formaldehyde's gonna be the mutagen. Mm -hmm. That's our control mutagen. So we can test other mutagens, which is gonna be the point of the lab. Okay. Do things cause mutations? Yes. That's going to be the question that we're asking. Yeah. So we know formaldehyde causes mutations, and then when we add peanut butter and jelly to the auger, um, we want to know if that it causes mutations as much as or in comparison to the formaldehyde. Everyone good? OK. So stop. <laughs> I'll quit now. <laughs> OK. So. The sunburnt legs. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so the procedures are a little bit different for all the, all the four controls. That's why everyone is um, laid out. Um, because there's the two different levels of tryptophan and control chemical. Um, so you need <coughs> something different every time and you're adding different things. Um, the other problem that we came across is the cytotoxicity level of the formaldehyde, which is how many cells, how much the cells will die if at a certain um, level concentration of, trip, of formaldehyde. Does that make sense? So since we didn't want to use too high of a concentration of formaldehyde, um, we use more cells, more of the 1% formaldehyde, so it's in the um, correct concentration, but we, then we transfer some of those, um, some of that mixture into a different tube. So, and then the rest is thrown away. But Who's we'll confused? Get to that. Raise your hand if you're confused. Yeah. Okay. There was just a problem with using too high of a concentration with, of formaldehyde, so we'll get to it later. So, for, for the negative control one, um, 
you first add 0.95 microliters of the 1% formaldehyde. Um, I use the culture tubes just because it's easier. What size culture tube? 15 mil? Yeah, the 15 mil. Um, so guys, those are the 15 mil culture tubes. They're clear, the bottom is clear, the top is um, sh uh, opaque, white, yeah. opaque white. And if you put the top on them, it doesn't quite go on all the way. It's not like a screw cap, it's a push on cap and it'll click closed. If you ever need to flip it, um, make sure you hold Mikey's it Mikey's gonna show you all the, we're gonna go in after this and show okay. you all the. Um, once you add the formaldehyde to the tube, you're, you add two milliliters of the overnight culture um, that you did in the procedure before that we went over. Um, then you incubate that for 20 to 30 minutes um, in at 200, RPM for thir at 37 degrees Celsius, so that's in the shaking incubator. Um, just put the tube in. Um, during that, it's really important that you microwave the molten top augers because they have to be at a certain temperature when you are using them. So it works really well if you put the tubes in the incubator and then the molten top augers are kind of jelly um, solid, uh, so you have to uh, microwave them in order for them to become a liquid in order to use them. Good? Okay, so then the 20 to 30 minute uh, incubation happens. So this is where we run into the problem of the concentration. Do I have to explain it or just tell them to do it? Uh, you're talking about the formaldehyde? Yeah, it's like math involved. <laughs> okay, so the, the straight up original problem is that the formaldehyde is too concentrated. Yeah. The secondary problem is that you have to add a certain amount of cells yes. to your mixture. Okay, so a certain volume of cell to your mixture. So what you have to do is first dilute the formaldehyde. The problem is, is when you dilute the formaldehyde, go ahead. You have too many cells to use and to plate. So then just from that, um, 0.95 microliters of formaldehyde and the two milliliters of the overnight culture that you incubated for the 20 to 30 minutes, you take out 150 microliters, which is the correct volume of cells um, and formaldehyde, assuming that it's uh, mixed evenly, just to a different culture tube. So we're making like a huge amount and we're just taking it. Yeah, basically. And with the rest of that, you can just throw it away okay. and put it in um, biohazard. Then with that 150 microliters, you add um, two milliliters of the molten top auger, uh, which you microwaved while the cells were incubating. Good. Um, mix gently. What I do is I put the top on the uh, tube, hold it, and then flip it just once so everything's mixed together. Um, the problem that you come across here is that the molten top auger, since you only have two milliliters of it, um, starts to solidify really quickly. So you have to do this process so at a decent pace. Let's just um, cover what you're talking about right now. Am I focusing on myself? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, now you're good. Okay. All right. So um, <laughs> imagine what you have right now is you're sitting at your bench. You have plates, and they have auger on the bottom of them. You have tubes, uh, and you are going to microwave those tubes because they have the top auger in them. And then separately, you have cells. Now, what you need to do is mix the cells with the molten auger, and then put it on top of the already built plates, the ones with the gel on the bottom. Yes. Yeah. However, you cannot microwave the cells because you will kill them. Uh, and once you've microwaved the molten auger, you can't wait too long because if it cools, then you won't be able to pour it onto the other plate. So this is actually, I think, where probably the, the greatest skill Yeah, it is. takes time to learn. The first time, I let the tubes sit, and then it just hardened in the tubes. So it takes a few times to get used to um, doing everything. What I do is do, I'm to four tubes at a time now, so I'll take four tubes out of the incubator, put them down and do just one at a time, add the top auger, um, mix it, and then pour it onto the plate and have everything pre-set up. What is have, really, really important about mixing? Yeah, the top. It will go all over. So explain what you have to do. 
to make sure the top's on. Yeah. Um, you put it on and it's not all the way on, so if you push it really hard, it, um, like you'll feel more friction against it. And then even when I flip it, hold the top, my hands are big enough and I have really small hands to <laughs> <laughs> hold it like this and then flip it just once. Can we talk more about your freakishly small hands? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is everyone following? Any questions, seriously ask. Nothing? Okay. So control one, um, you'll add the top auger with the tryptophan. Um, we went over all that before. Um, the 40 to 48 degrees Celsius um, of the molten top auger is, is really important because if it's too hot, then it'll kill the cells. If it's too cold, then it'll harden too quickly. So the 40 to 48 degrees is a perfect temperature um, just for to make sure that it won't harden and it won't kill the cells. Um, you mix them gently, which we talked about, um, and then you pour them onto the surface of the mineral auger plates, which you'll have labeled and everything during that 20 to 30 minute incubation. Um, then there's two different ways to make sure it's evenly spread out on the plate. Um, faster is just to swirl it around, um, make sure it's pretty evenly laid out. If it's not, it's not the end of the world because the cells will still grow where um, the auger is, but it, you'll see the cells easier if it's um, spread out. Um, another way to do it is to get one of those purple rakes um, that are in one of the back drawers and you can um, push it around. So. I think that's probably the less preferred method. Yeah, it just takes longer um, by the time you get the rake open and out. If you preset everything, then you can do it. But it also creates more trash. And Who's confused about what she's talking about right now? Raise your hand. Gabby, raise your hand. <laughs> Gabby, raise your hand. OK. Anybody else? Arjun? No? You know I'm going to expect you to be able to do this. Yeah, I know. OK, so ask your questions now, Jackson. Right now, <coughs> we're mixing stuff. And you're telling us the best way to mix it so that they can grow. Not mix it. To pour it. To pour it. Oh, sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. You're pouring it in something new from where it's just been mixed. Yes. You're pouring it onto one of the plates. Right. Julia? So you're just like saying just to pour it's better than... Like and you just yeah. like... Pour and just... So it's like if you pour like a normal LV plate. Yeah. Yes. Like We're not allowed to use that word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is that curiosity with between nutrient broth and the word we're not allowed to use? Um, I actually don't know. Uh, I'm assuming that there's different concentrations of chemicals in it. Yeah, so stuff. LB, yeah. if you think about it, LB is kind of like a generic yeah. food. So if you think like about purees, or, it's basically a puree, right? So it's going to have just all kinds of, um, all kinds of things. It's going to have excess amino acids and salts and sugars and, and basically everything you need. Um, the nutrient auger is just, it's, a, it's basically an LB, but a more specific type. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the minimal growth is going to be like more specific type of nutrient auger, just missing one ingredient necessary for life. What do you mean more specific? So this is, uh, you know, okay, so imagine I have in LB, it would be like, if I had taken apples and bananas and um, steak and mushrooms and mixed them all up, right? And then the nutrient auger would be like if I added specific amount of glucose oh. and a specific so amount of sodium chloride. chloride. Exactly. So this this uh, LB will grow anything. This is just a little more specific as to what we're. So we're just trying to reduce the number of variables in the. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Wait, what did you say? Answer. Four years. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay. Um, so then you mixed, um, you swirled, sorry, on the plate, and then it takes about two to three minutes to harden. It's usually about a minute, really, um, but just to make sure, wait two to three minutes. Um, and then you incubate upside down um, overnight. 37 degrees Celsius, or if um, 
you're doing this on a Friday and you need the weekend, then just leave it on top at room temperature. Good. I'm incubating some. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Um, anyone confused? All right, let's go ahead and take a break and then we'll go to the lab and we'll start taking a look at a lot of what this stuff looks like. Okay.